Welcome back, everyone, to the Weekly Flare Podcast. If you're just joining us, Chris's favorite word is moist. Oh, my gosh. And he really likes it when people tell him oh. that it's moist out oh. or ask him if he's looking moist or if he's feeling moist Ugh. or if his food is moist. Oh. So if you ever see Chris out and about, be sure and go and ask him uh, if it's moist. He'll really appreciate it. No, I won't. He will. Oh. He's just pretending for the camera. Right? My eyes twitching. That's weird. Is it moist? <laughs> does it need to be moist? No, it does not. <laughs> Chris, you know what your eye does need to do? What? It needs to go to space. Uh, my whole body needs to go to space. You know why? Because it's not moist in space. Oh my god. It's very dry. <laughs> oh my god. Because it's a vacuum. <laughs> it is a vacuum. But no, seriously though. Um, so you know about Blue Origin? You showed me before the, the rockets? Show. Yes. Okay, well, Jeff Bezos, the founder and CEO of Amazon, has a little rocket thing he's doing called Blue Origin. And um, they launched a rocket, separated the capsule that the crew would be in, which of course there wasn't actually a crew because it's a test. Separated, floated around, the capsule landed, parachuted down, I guess softly enough that no one inside would have gotten injured because they said it was a success. And then the rocket came falling down to space, straight down, falling down from space. I said falling down to space. That'd be weird. If it was in China, that's what would happen because it'd fall away from the Earth because, you know, they're on the other mm -hmm. side of the globe. Right. Anyway, so the rocket comes back down, fires back on its rockets, and does a nice soft landing at four miles per hour and doesn't fall over and explode. Wait, I was really surprised Stay when I saw that. standing. Um, so, yeah. Um, when this broke yesterday, when I saw the news, um, everyone was like, Oh man, Blue Origin just showed SpaceX how to land a rocket. You know, it was like everyone was mm -hmm. like really ripping into SpaceX. Now, not to discount this amazing feat, because this really is a huge step forward in reusable rockets. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff Bezos was kind of funny. He was like, we broke, you know, we set, we, we made history today. We now have a reused, a reusable rocket sitting like in our storage facility or mm -hmm. whatever, because like it's been to space, came back down and they can reuse it. All the other rockets they haven't been able to recover to reuse, so that, you know, big deal. Um, slightly different though, so let's walk through this. This rocket has a capsule on top, mm -hmm. it has about 110,000 pounds, 110, pounds of thrust, which is a lot. It reaches about Mach 3, um, three and a half, somewhere in there, which gets you right up into the upper, upper, upper atmosphere, and then the capsule separates, you float around for a while in space, you can look around, see the Earth, see the you know horizon, and then you go back down to Earth, and the rocket falls back down, and that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, the SpaceX rocket is actually taking supplies into space for the space station, which is way up out of the atmosphere, mm -hmm. you know, orbiting around. So it reaches about like uh, Mach 30, it gets up into orbit, and then tries to come back down. And because of, you know, how big it is and all that, it's landing in the ocean on a barge. Mm -hmm. Which is moving. Yeah. So, um... And it's a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger. And it has to come out of orbit and get back upright and slow down mm -hmm. and hit that target. Um, I have a feeling that they're probably still going to be really looking into this blue, how Blue Origin managed to do it. Mm-hmm. Because it was a really good landing. Yes, it was. I mean, it just came right down and sat down. I mean, it was... They had cameras all around, so they knew right where they were dropping it down. It was very amazing. Mm-hmm. But, um... It's a big deal, though. Yes. Reusable rockets is the probably the only way that um, commercial space flight will happen. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, it's just too expensive. Yeah. And me and you will never be able to... Okay. Probably never be able to afford. I'm not gonna say never, because you know you might end up rich one day. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You might be able to afford a five million dollar space flight. Mm -hmm. But majority of the people will never get to go to space if commercial space flight doesn't happen. So this is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. Speaking of big deals, Chris, did you ever watch Mystery Science Theater Three Thousand? I've seen a couple of you. Well. If you were a fan of the older episodes with Joel Hodgson, I've got good news. They're on Kickstarter to do new shows, and it's funded. So they asked for $2 million, and they would do three shows. 
They're at about 2.2, I think is what it was, right? 2.5. 2.5, somewhere in there. Um, it's awesome. If they get all the way up to 5.5 million, they'll do a whole 12 episodes. Um, and I think I saw that Felicia Day is on there. Okay. So I don't know if you're a fan of Felicia Day. You know who Felicia Day is? No. Well, never mind then. But anyways, um, if you're a fan of Mr. Sun's Theater 3000, or Rift Tracks, if you know what that is, you should go check out their Kickstarter. Um, they have lots of different um, rewards for backers. And this is something that definitely will happen. It won't be like some other Kickstarters that have been in the news recently that um, were funded and kind of fell through. Mm. Or were funded and then had some manufacturing issues and are now selling their product on Amazon to try and raise some more money. Or the Kickstarter was just like, you don't have a good enough prototype, get out of here. Uh, this is going to happen. These guys know what they're doing. They know how much money it takes to make it happen. So um, it'll be there. If you don't know what Mystery Science Theater 3000 is, tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day, so hopefully you're listening to this on Thanksgiving, because otherwise this will be too late. Um, they have a marathon on of Mystery Science Theater on their YouTube channel. Good. I believe it's on their YouTube channel. It's a live stream with them, and they like sit there and they watch episodes. And so you can check it out, see what it's all about. Um, there used to be a bunch of them on Netflix. I'm not sure if they're still there. I'll check. I'll check tonight. But um, seriously, Mystery Science Theater 3000 is great. If you don't know what it is, it's basically this guy came up with this idea because he was watching some terrible movies and was like kind of riffing on them, making fun of them. They made a TV show out of it where he was in space with some robots, and they were forced to watch these terrible movies. And the way they didn't, this the experiment in the show was like, how far could they go before they would lose their mind? And the way they didn't lose their mind in the show is by making fun of the movies. Um, the concept is kind of cheesy, but the show is hilarious. Yes, it is. So you should go check that out, because it's great. And then when you're done checking that out, you should go watch the Captain America Civil War trailer. Chris. Yes. Thoughts. Very excited. Very excited. That trailer was very good. One of the best trailers I've seen. It was a very good trailer that didn't spoil anything that anyone has been keeping up with the Marvel Universe didn't yes. already know. If you haven't been watching the last few Cap uh, the last few Marvel movies, okay, aside from Ant Man, if you haven't watched the last Avengers movie and the Captain America movie before that, uh, Winter Soldier, you would have watched this trailer and been like, "What the heck is going on?" Um, if you saw the last Avengers movie especially though, or Iron Man 3 even, uh, you, you kind of knew everything that was going to be shown in this trailer. There's no spoilers in that sense. Now, if you don't know what Civil War is about, then yeah, there's some spoilers. Mm -hmm. Because you just didn't know what was going on. And then you're going to be like... Phew. But um, I'm assuming that everyone probably knows what Captain America's Civil War is going to be about. I'm not going to spoil it for you in that off chance that you don't know. And if you don't, maybe avoid the trailer and just wait till the movie comes out. But uh, you, seriously, though, it was a really good trailer. I'm mm -hmm. really excited for the movie now. It comes out in May. Are you going to go see it, Chris? I will. I'll probably go see it with you. It's good I ticket. will probably go see it opening, uh, night. opening night. Thursday. I don't know. Probably Friday, maybe. I don't know. It just depends. Okay. The Thursday night thing, like, since it's not at midnight, I don't care as much for every movie. Except for Star Wars, because it's Star Wars. Um, so, I don't know. It might be Friday, Saturday. I don't know. Okay. It just depends. So it'll definitely be sometime in that opening week, though. That gotcha. we'll go see it and uh, enjoy that movie. Okay. Because it's going to be good. Um, Chris, did I tell you that I bought that whole Marvel pack? It's like all of Phase 2 in one box set? No. Well, I did. Because it was available on Amazon, finally. And it should get here um, in a couple weeks. I think it's like December 8th is when it comes okay. out. It's, it's like all the Marvel Phase 2 movies. So everything since the first Avengers movie up through Ant-Man. Okay. That's not a bad set. All those Marvel movies. I held off buying all of them in hopes that they would do this. I was getting really worried because we're rolling into Phase 3 and they hadn't announced it. And then I just, I got an email from Amazon one day and they're like, Hey, you bought the last one. You're interested in Marvel. This thing's here. And I bought it. It was very expensive. I bet. Yeah. I need to buy... I need to buy uh, the trilogy, the Star Wars trilogy. Um, also very expensive. Unless it's like a hundred bucks at FYE. 
Yeah, uh, those movies very expensive to buy them all because there's not a lot of ways. Not a lot of the versions are still in print. Mm -hmm. So unless you buy the newest versions that just came out with a digital release, which um, are different. Uh, I don't know if you know, but only A New Hope has a 20th Century Fox fanfare in front of it mm -hmm. now, which is going to be strange watching the rest of the movies because John Williams specifically wrote the score to go with that. So it sounds kind of strange. And they also took the numbers off of all the movies. So now they're just Star Wars The Phantom Menace, Star Wars Attack of the Clones, Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, Star Wars A New Hope, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, and Star Wars Return of the Jedi. I believe in a box somewhere in my parents' house, we have the VHS of 4, 5, and were, 6. Now, were they the original trilogy VHS or the special edition trilogy VHS? I think Is it, it was... a blue box or a gold box? It was not a box. They were the sl like the slip-in. It was a slip-in one. And I think right, right. Black. But inside the slip-in was like... The slip-in, was it gold or blue? I couldn't tell you. It's been so long since I've seen them. I can just tell you that on one side of the box was Darth Vader half of his face. Yes. that's. I believe both of them were that way. Okay. I don't remember. Because I, I don't have the original. Mine's the special, which is the gold one with Vader's face. How old is that? That came out in 97. I will see. If I can find the box, but ever since I was in that house, I know for a fact that we've had those. Mm -hmm. um, those movies are great. I own every version, every cut of Star Wars, some way. So I have the special edition VHS, and then in 2004 he redid the DVDs, and I didn't buy the box set. I waited until they came out individually. Luckily, I did because um, they became two disc sets each individually. Mm -hmm. They had the 2004 DVD version. And the original theater version on DVD, which is amazing. Yes. And then my um, parents got me the Blu-rays for Christmas a few years ago when those came out. I remember out. that. So I have the Blu-ray cut version, the DVD mm -hmm. cut, the original cut, the special edition cut. So I don't have the newest digital cut that just came out because like, technically it's a different cut mm -hmm. because they took the numbers off of it. Yeah. But I don't think there's anything else other than those changes. I mean, I mean and this, the 20th century mm -hmm. score that's not there. Um, now... I heard something interesting. I don't know if this is true. I heard that those are actually the 97 special edition cut, the DVD ver the Blu-rays that came out to go along with those. I don't think that's true because I would have bought them because that's my personal favorite version of the movie is the 97 special edition cut. I know everyone's going to hate me because the original trilogy is the only trilogy, whatever. Mm -hmm. Get over it. The 97 special edition, in my opinion, is the better cut of the movie. Would you, if I found a VHS player... Mm -hmm. I have a VHS player. Okay. If I, mean, I it's at my parents, but I have if, one. If I, I have found, access to one, rather. if I found the VHSs, if I still have them, mm -hmm. would you still watch them? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, the ninety six, the ninety seven special edition is my favorite cut. Okay. So what, I, mean, what if, I like the original trilogy cut also. Okay. I just prefer the ninety seven. I mean, partially because that's what I grew up watching. Mm -hmm. Partially, I just think it's a better cut. The scenes that they added, with the exception of Han Solo stepping on Jabba's tail, which is just stupid. I don't think I remember that. With the exception of that one scene, everything else they added in the 97 Special Edition, in my opinion, is great. I'll see. I'm going to give my parents a call. So, I know everyone, you can yell at me, hate me, send me all your hate mail, whatever. I've heard it all. Uh, that's the best version, in my opinion. It's not the best version. It's my most enjoyed one to mm -hmm. watch. Speaking of Star Wars. Yes, speaking of Star Wars. You've had a chance to play Battlefront. Yes, I've played I've had a, a lot of Battlefront. I think I've played a lot more than you. Because uh, no, I'm already at level 16. I've actually played more. Mine's just split between Xbox One and sure. PS4. Okay. I'm at level 16. So, yes, I'm at a lot of hours. Just it's split between two systems, both of which are about at level 10 now. So, okay. so overall, what do you think? I really enjoy the game. It feels like Star Wars. I mean, they captured the look and feel of the original trilogy so well. I like the cheesy... Um, I like the sound effects. Side swipe. I yeah. like that um, when the X-Wings and the TIE Fighters blow apart, they don't just explode, mm -hmm. but they like break apart like the models exactly. did in the movies. They really captured the look and feel of the original three movies. During most of the gameplay, my favorite thing would have to be the score. The scoring is... Is absolutely really, amazing. Well, it's like Battlefield scoring. I mean, it's dice. So they copied basically the Battlefield scoring system. 
Oh, you're talking about the score. I meant the score is in the music. Oh, the music score. The music score. Well, it's John Williams' score mixed with um, some of the score from Empire Strikes, from mm-hmm. Shadows of the Empire video game. Did you play it? No. That game, some of the Hoth music from that game is the best Star Wars music. Um, it's just great. Yeah, the music for the game is perfect. But I mean, it's just the Star Wars music. They they just nailed it. Oh, it's it. it's nailed. Like I I honestly most of the there's time moments I, in that game where you're running around and you're like, this just feels like Star Wars. It's great. It's just free roam and it's amazing. It's good. It's um, got a lot of now. What do you think about the actual gameplay? Uh, the gameplay. That's where people start to differ in their opinion. I honestly think it's really good. There's a lot of you're not trapped in this. You're not trapped. It feels <laughs> like like when you play a Call of Duty game. Your map is your map. Right. With this one, it's a large scale map, and sure. you don't have to, you know. Now you're, you've all, you've mostly played Supremacy, which is a forty. It's twenty on twenty battle yes. with air vehicles yes. enabled. Um, which is which is fun. I, I like that one because you have everything in that game. Yeah, it's a good taste of everything that the game has to offer, mm-hmm. except for ATATs. Exactly. Which is why I play Walker Assault because it has everything the game uh, has to offer. It has. Defending then capturing bases. Mm-hmm. It has the ATATs. It has the air vehicles. It has all the star cards, all the power ups. Mm-hmm. Also, um, it's just fun when you drive the ATAT. Yes. For that, it's like you only a get a bit of time. You only get like fifty three it. seconds. It's just really fun, and uh, I love trying in the snow speeder and trying to tie up the ATAT. You mm-hmm. know, it's really hard because everything will shoot you as soon as they see you trying to do mm-hmm. it. But um, the game plays to me exactly what I wanted it to feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, the maps, there's, you, you find yourself on the same map really fast because there's only like 12 or 13. Mm-hmm. And um, some of those are fighter squadron only maps and some of them only appear in certain game modes. So yeah, you do find yourself playing the same map pretty soon. That being said, I love the game. I do too. I think it was worth what I paid for because exactly. I will be playing a lot and all the, um, the Jakku... The Battle of Jakku comes out, that's free for everyone, and includes a new game mode and the map. And then if you buy the season pass or all the DLC, there's gonna be 16 more maps and four new game modes. Um, granted, if you buy the season pass, it makes the game $110 instead of $60. But um, it's a lot of content. And if you're worried about there not being a great single player experience, which have you played any of the no, missions or anything, I have a friend who really loves them. Um, and I haven't, I've messed around with them a little bit. I think they're enjoyable, but they're not what a lot of people want in a single player game. My guess is since Battlefront 2 has already been confirmed as being a thing that they're going to do, whether they call it Battlefront 2 or it's just a huge expansion that you download for Battlefront, my guess is there'll be some serious single player or something going on because now they have everything working and they've captured all of the assets from you know, the, the physical models and put them into the game mm-hmm. they're going to want to use that to show off what they can do because yeah. it is dice after all and they do like to show off their engine mm-hmm. which uh, runs great for this game by the way probably one of the better launches they've had they only had issues um, at midnight until about 8 in the morning actually it was earlier than that I don't know what time because I went to bed it came out on a Tuesday right yes I Tuesday bought, at midnight I bought mine Wednesday right. by the time you bought it Wednesday everything was working was perfect and by the time I got home Tuesday night, everything was working perfect. I can't find out exactly what time in the morning they had, but I'm pretty sure it was before 8 a.m. So there was at most an eight hour window where they had server issues, which is disappointing because right before that, everything was working fine on EA's early access that they do. So DICE, EA, what are you doing? Um, speaking of bad server, since we have a few minutes, and we like to thank Living Chick for liking and restreaming this for us. Every week. Um, um, Rainbow Six Siege comes out next week. We were talking about that. I downloaded the beta because I was supposed to start today. I got home from work, tried to start it up. Uh, the servers are down because they're not working. Now, this is funny because they had an earlier closed beta. Everything worked great. Mm. And they said they, like, switched some stuff. For some gameplay mechanics or something and it broke the servers and it was just a good thing they did this beta mm-hmm. because otherwise we'd be buying the game and none of us could play together so good on them for doing one more beta bad on them for screwing up the servers yeah after hyping we're gonna do one more beta but it was a free beta so it's not like you paid anything for it and that's the point of the beta is to figure out what's broken mm-hmm. and they found out immediately 
The servers are broken. Yes. That being said, I watched the tutorial videos because you can do those offline. Mm -hmm. uh, the game looks amazing. Like, visually, the game just looks amazing. It looks really nice. The, all the textures of the walls and everything just look great. Yeah. I'm really excited for that game. I'm sad that it's coming out so close to Battlefront because now my time will really be torn between everything I'm trying to play. But I feel like my Sunday Night Destiny time will probably now become Sunday Night Rainbow Six time. Because all the people I play Destiny with are getting Rainbow Six, and that's what we used to play before Destiny uh -huh. came out. So that'll be okay. Yes. Destiny will just fall on the wayside till the next expansion comes out. Which will happen, and we all know it's going to, so don't act like it won't. It will. Um, yeah, that's all I have to talk about this week. Chris, what about you? That's about it. Good. You plug yourself in. No, I will not plug myself in. I'm not a robot. But I will plug where you can find me on the internet. Go right ahead. You can go to Twitter. I'm at James Walter. And you can find everything you want to know about me there. If you're really good, you can find my Facebook page from there, too. So, good luck. Where can they find you, Chris? You can find me on Twitter. It's uh, Never Lose Heart. If you do find my Facebook page and you send me a friend request, just send me a message also and say you, you watch the show so I'm not like, this is some random weirdo. I'll be like, it's some random fan, and then I'll add you. Otherwise, I'll just be like, it's some random weirdo. No, thank you. Just a heads up. Because I have, like, a lot of people in my friends list just, yeah. like, sitting there. Yeah, that's how I am. I, like, I don't know what these people are doing. They're just, like, going through Facebook adding random people or something. I don't I don't get it. Yeah. I try to clean mine out. I'll be friends with you. Just make sure you tell me how you know me. Um, if you want to follow the show, the show's easy to find. Just go to theweeklyflare.com. Everything's there. Our Twitter page, our Facebook, our Instagram, our Google Plus if you're into that, YouTube, and of course our show notes are there. So you can find all that. And uh, send us some feedback. Email us at, um, it's just, what is our email? Podcast at theweeklyflare.com? I think it's podcast at theweeklyflare.com. We don't get any email there, so I never see it, so yeah. I'm not positive. But I'm pretty sure it's podcast at theweeklyflare.com. I do know it's in the show notes. So you can go there and find it. Or you can tweet us your feedback. Or the best thing you could do is go to iTunes or YouTube. Leave us some comments, some thumbs ups. That sort of thing. Share the show with everyone that you know. Just like shove it down their throat. Or I mean not the throat. I guess shove it into their ears. Because it's audio. Yep. I don't know. Just tell them all about the show. Anyways, we're going to get out of here because the camera's about to turn off and say you're done recording. Because... DSLRs can only record 30 minutes at a time because of some crazy standards. I know why, but it's just too much to go into. Yeah. So this is the Weekly Flare. Thank you for watching. We hope you had a great Thanksgiving or are having a great Thanksgiving or both if you're somewhere in the middle somehow. And we'll see you guys again next week. Peace.